Hey yo guys, how is it going? Tally here and today I am going to bring you some tips, tricks and information on the absolute best way to play Heroes and I do mean the best. Alright, first of all before we do that if you do want to support the channel please make sure to like the video, please make sure to subscribe and join Team Tally today and of course leave a comment of hashtag for the algorithm, help get the channel out there a bit more. Now guys, if you do want to follow me, please, my socials are on screen, Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, that's all out of the way. Let's dive in and get into the information. Alright, so a lot of this information I have learned and I have gained because I have played 100 games against lots of different decks, ranging from rogue to meta and irrelevant. And this is to give you an insight on how to take on as many different decks as possible. Let's start going into game 1, 2 and even 3. So right now in the June 2020 format, the absolute best thing to do is play Heroes as a going first strategy. With anywhere between 8 to 10 out of engine cards you can set to create interruption on your opponent's turn. These can be trap cards or quick play spells and in my opinion, the absolute best are impermanence and some number of solemns, with a solid budget option being forbidden chalice. These cards in conjunction with cards like Dark Law, Dystopia and even Absolute Zero allow you to play a strategy similar to Salomon Greats and that the aim is to survive turn 1 and OTK turn 2 using board wipes with Absolute Zero and power cards like Bane or Trinity for huge damage. The reason that we play trap cards and cards that you can set now is that we have access to Liquid Soldier who, unfortunately while not being a budget option, is pretty mandatory in the deck in the sense that it allows you to dig deeper into your deck to get those unsearchable trap cards, also getting you cards like Mass Change or Mask Changes and allowing you to interrupt during your opponent's turn. Setting up cards such as Darklaw or Dystopia or Absolute Zero with any sort of interruption set, especially a Mask Change, is pretty lethal because you can interact on a vast scale during your opponent's turn. Dark Law of course closing off your opponent's graveyard is massive considering the over reliance on graveyards today hitting a lot of meta decks who want to recur resources. Dystopia in conjunction is able to hit some of the bigger playmakers in a deck either before they're able to activate their effects or sometimes it can interrupt because they need those cards still on field at the point of resolution. Again it's all about slowing your opponent down and it's burn effect going for that kill isn't too bad either. And finally, being able to abuse Absolute Zero on your opponent's turn by mask changing it into Acid allows you a full board wipe, allowing you to interrupt plays or destroy a board before they can really take advantage of it, which is amazing. Game 2 is where it gets a bit harder with board breaking cards and potentially more hand traps in play, even whether you're going first or second or even if that's your choice or not coming into play. We will touch on this more in the siding strategy later on. Essentially, you're going to have to side appropriately and work on dismantling a board and OTKing or just out resourcing your opponents with cards like Dark Law and Dystopia, especially in conjunction with each other. Game 2 is where you really have to consider your resources, the order in which you play your cards and how to best effectively play those cards and you've got to understand that because Hero is fragile, you've really got to prioritise some cards to actually come later than others, even though they are massive power cards. Say you've got a card like Fusion Destiny, both going first and second, Fusion Destiny is amazing, but you don't want to just waste it, you don't want to blindly play it into an Ash or Negate. So of course, you use your cards like maybe Stratos, you use your E-Calls, you get them out of the way early and try and judge based on your opponent's reactions, do they have a Negate? If they have in fact negated a card like Stratos, which is kind of like an obvious card to negate for a lot of people, or you've even got so far as going into Cross Crusader and they've negated that with an Ash, then you can safely go ahead and use your Fusion Destiny. Going second, it softens your opponent up and breaks their board. Going first, again, can soften your opponent up, get some important resources in Grave and allow you to start interacting on your opponent's turn. And finally, you've got to understand what your opponent is doing and why they are doing it. Are they making you go first, even going into game 2? Then you've got to assume that they are going to try and side in some board breaking cards themselves. So for example, say we want to set up a Dark Law. Is it actually the right thing to do to shotgun Dark Law? Probably not. What you want to do is leave a Dark Monster on field and if they've got that Dark Ruler no more, they use that and they hit one of the other two cards that you're using, you know, maybe you've got a Dystopia on field, maybe you've got a Sunrise on field. Alright, the Dark Ruler no more hits that 
and then you use the mask change because that won't impact your dark law and you're still able to get that off allowing you to again interact on your opponent's turn in an active and a passive way. Passively because they don't have a graveyard anymore and actively because when they search you're going to go ahead and rip a card from their hand with Dark Law. Ultimately how you handle game 2 is very much going to be based on experience and your deck knowledge. Not just of your deck but of also your opponent's deck. So the best way to learn how to handle game 2 is just play lots of games. And if you are forced into game 3 then this is where heroes actually have quite a decent advantage because heroes can have two game plans with this strategy. You can side back in your going first cards and your solemns and you can play a going first strategy. Again, trying to survive turn one, get into turn two and then OTK in your opponent while diminishing their resources or you can choose to go second. This works in a lot of ways and it works because if you have went first in game one or game two and your opponent has now understood that going first is your game plan, they'll very much side for going second. And what you can do is you can go second. We know that heroes are a very explosive deck that generate a lot of advantage very quickly. So your opponent sides in a lot of going second cards, which ultimately can be bricky when you're put into a going first situation. They end up ending on a lackluster board or something that's really easy to beat over and you set up your board and OTK. Now they may have some powerful going second cards like Nibiru, but we will talk about how to counter Nibiru with this deck because it is incredibly important to consider. So please understand that when you're going into even game 2 or game 3, if you have the choice to go first or second, you do have the option to be flexible, you do have the option to play with your opponent's mind just a little bit, make them expect that you'll go second or go first and do the opposite. I will guarantee you will win more games doing that. I've won a lot more games since I have tried being flexible and experimenting with different strategies, setting an example by going first and then OTKing in game 3 because they didn't think that I was going to go second. Alright, one important thing to consider as well when going into game 2 or 3, be very aware of the hero's natural predator, Nibiru. In order to combat this, you want to hold your extenders like Malicious, Miracle Fusion, Fusion Destiny as much as you can while still allowing yourself to combo. Don't hinder yourself if you have to play these cards, then play them, but if you can afford to hold back, it will pay off later on down the line. For example, going first. You will have a couple interrupts through back row as well as monster interactions. And if you have a mass change set, then you can go ahead and just end on a small board, maybe Sunrise and Cross Crusader. They'll either let you pass on a Sunrise going into a Dark Law with other set cards which can be tricky to beat, or they'll hit you with the Rock. And if you've been smart with your resources, you should still be able to end on a couple of bodies on board with some set cards as interruption. Going second, you want to build a threatening board presence that can either wipe your opponent's board and do damage through it, again holding your extenders, for example Miracle Fusion or Bane, and from there your opponent has two choices. They can go and try and hit you with the rock, in which case because you have extenders you still have plays, or they can let that go through and you will most likely either dismantle their board, OTK or both. Again it's important to try and hold back some extenders because for example Bane and Dystopia as an OTK, because you can burn for 1600 damage with Dystopia, then Bane is able to blow up any monster with less than 3000 attack, or if you've hit it with an Honest Neos, anything under 5500 attack, which is definitely an OTK, and there's very few monsters in the format right now with over 3000 attack. So now that you've got a clear board, you have over 6400 damage, and that's an easy win. As we've mentioned before, Part of the beauty of heroes is being able to go first and second depending on how you side. So you can adapt your strategy to whichever deck you're playing against. Do you want to break a board and then OTK? Brilliant! You can play lightning storms and other board breaking cards and kill them really quickly. Are you going up against a huge build a board deck? Then make sure you're using Mystic Mine, you can go into Trinity and OTK them there and then as well. If you're in no rush to kill your opponent and you'd rather choke out their resources, Dark Ruler into either Bane or Absolute Zero will wipe their board and allow you to control the pace and they're either going to scoop because they have no resources or you're able to control the game from there. Especially if you've got cards like Dark Law that you can use in conjunction with them to banish all of their cards. 
Unfortunately, this does mean that for heroes to operate at peak performance, they are going to rely on expensive staples to win a lot of games, which can be an issue for budget players, but as we are currently in a format where the only play is online play, go ham gang, and then we can worry about the, the real life play later. And finally, I'm going to give you a good amount of advice on how to get the most value out of your cards. A couple of things to note about some of the cards you're commonly going to use, Mask Change and Increase can both be used to effectively dodge targeting effects that are most commonly found in the format in cards like Infinite Impermanence and Effect Veiler and Nightmare Unicorn, but it does work on any card that targets, please remember that. It does not work against non-targeting removal however, and we're going to explain that in a minute. The reason it works is that the activation requirement for these cards is to target and the effect to negate, for example, on impermanence happens on resolution. So they've targeted your monster and it's no longer on field on resolution, then it can't be negated. But when it comes to non-targeting removal, they choose which card gets sent or destroyed or negated on resolution. So they don't actually have to choose a card until you have responded to it, in which case it's too late to mask change it because they'll just get rid of or negate whichever you have summoned. So that's an important thing to remember and it will get you out of some sticky situations. Elemental Hero Absolute Zero's Raigeki effect activates when it leaves the field, as we all know, which is a great effect. The question is, how are we going to get it to leave the field? Well, I'm glad you asked. One of the obvious ones is, of course, use it as link material going second into established boards to either destroy their board or force a negate. You can use increase during your opponent's turn, and if it's worth the card advantage, feel free to pop it with Sunrise or Declaration of Battle, or even Dystopia, and of course, that good old mass change for a full board wipe into Acid. And to add to the linking it off, if you link off into Cross Crusader, you can do what's called chain blocking by having Absolute Zero as Chain Link 1, and Cross Crusader is Chainlink 2, they can only really negate Absolute Zero with a Called by the Grave, so you can also think about that. And finally, Stratos as well, while it is one of the best searchers in the deck, is actually also back row removal. Some people don't take advantage of this, and it can be easy back row removal along with the Vision Heroes, because the Vision Hero will get you two monsters on board, which Stratos can then use to blow up two back row. As well, if you're going into a grind game against a back row heavy deck and you've got a couple monsters on board and you top deck an E or a Stratos, you can really bait out some interaction with that Stratos trying to pop their back row. And before we end today's video, I need you to let me know if you would like me to make a combo guide on some handy plays and combos featuring our favourite monsters. Pop it down in the comments below, guys. Guys, that is today's video. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to give it a like. If you love it, make sure to give it a share and tell everyone you know about Team Tally today. Also, guys, if you want to support the video, make sure to leave a comment, even if it's just hashtag for the algorithm. As always, guys, if you want to catch up with me outside of YouTube, here are my socials on screen, Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, at TCG underscore Tally. And finally, you have been amazing. I have been Tally. I will catch you all later. Bye.